Hey, John. Hey, what's going on? Well, what's going on? You, you know more than I. You're 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 in the, that big state of New York, up upstate New York. <laughs> I'm I, I'm in I'm in uh, where the, where the heck am I? I'm in Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> If you say that wrong, it's misery. Yeah, misery. <laughs> you, you, see, you know, you see how you New Yorkers are. You you talking about bad about everybody. <laughs> New York. I'm not usually called that. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, did, did I did I say something wrong? What what happened? What? I, I, I you know I, I don't live, I don't know why I spend enough time in New York. I live on the Seneca Nation territory. Oh, We're not part of New York. Oh, oh excuse me. We're just surrounded by it. Oh, oh excuse me. Oh. I, I, I forgive me. I, I I I got my I got my geography wrong. <laughs> so oh, so there's, there's there's some things we need to talk about. But you know, first let's let's get some stuff straight first. Um, now you know we we we, we talk a little bit since we since we uh, met a few years ago, a couple of years ago. We've talked a little bit. Uh, and the first thing I. I Okay, let me put it this way. I have a uh, this 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 alliteration of these things I'm doing right now. I'm talking to certain only a couple of people. Uh, you you know people are talking like well you know one uh, Grayson I talked to uh, on mm -hmm. on certain things and this other guy uh, uh, Rodney Black and when I talk to Rodney we call it uh, he I call him Black Man because his last name is Black right now yeah, yeah. Now, now this is going to lead to some. Uh, let me not offend anybody. But now I was, I was talking. I said, "Well, well, should, should I call? Should I call John like like the the red man because I got a black man going on? But that might be offensive. So let me ask him what the deal is. You know what I mean? Now, what is the deal? You know, um, uh, if somebody says red man now, is that some sort of you know? Because the Redskins is aren't they changing? Tell me what's going on. I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, they're dropping they're dropping the name. I, you know, there's been a lot of pressure for them to change that name because. Red skin is a slur, and it, mm. it it's kind of like reducing somebody down just just to not just the the color of their skin, mm -hmm. but just their skin. And mm -hmm. the use of that word was also associated with paying bounties for that skin, mm -hmm. and so that's why for us, I mean, but it, it, red man is a, is another one of those. It's it's how we were described by other people, but not how we ever described ourselves. Exactly. And, you exactly. know, so, I mean, it's, it, all of this language is tough because we're all, you know, yourself, myself, we're not using words that are necessarily appropriate or the language that is necessary. We're, we're using the language that we have to use, the one that we you know, have in common, even if it's not ours. Exactly. So for me... When I use the words that the words that I use, I use the word native more than anything else. Oh, really? When I was when I'm talking, I don't, not Native American, just native. Uh, of and, course. Yes. Uh, and yeah, so that's the one I use. Obviously, we've talked before about words like ungwe I mean, our word for being uh, a real human being. Oh, the the, um, uh, the, the ungwe ungwe one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ungwe ungwe. That, that, that's you know that's a word that you know that I try to at least familiarize people with, if not for them to use it so they understand what I use and what I'm saying. Right. Sometimes language is tough for people, and I, and I get that. But, um, I mean, even even the word Mohawk mm. is not our word. It's a word that other people use. And it's like the word Sioux. Sioux mm. is not a, uh, I mean, it, that's a bit of a pejorative. And, you know, the Lakota don't necessarily like being called the Sioux, even though mm. because of indoctrination, they've adopted that word. They call mm. themselves the Standing Rock Sioux, mm -hmm. even though Sioux, I think it means snake or something like that. Um, but, you know, for in, our word for who we are as, as to distinguish us from the word Mohawk is Gunyagahaga, and it just means the people of the land of Flint. Well, 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 I'm say, say that again because uh, strangely enough, strangely enough, my grandmother's uh, mother is pure Mohawk, so I should mm -hmm. I, I should know this. You know what I mean? So no, let, let me let me get this down. Let me wrote, write this down. So now, what should it problem? What should it possibly? It shouldn't be Mohawk because she's down in South Carolina, and, and her, yep. her husband is like a, 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 a they call it well as Gullah or Geechee. They say Geechee, but Gullah interchangeably. So so what what would what, what would what would Mohawk actually be? You, you mentioned it. Let me just write it down. Okay, uh, let me, I'll I'll write it. I'll spell it okay. for you how we spell it first. Okay. It's it's K A N K A N I E N I E N K E H K E H A K A 
A-K-A. Okay. Now the aga at the end is is um is a word that we use that means people. So when we use a word and it ends in aga, we mean the people of a place. So so, so, oh, 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 so, so uh, AKA aga is people. Aga just means the people. Yeah. Right. The so, people. I'm like sorry. I, it, means, it means the people. Well, well, it means it, it's it, it's attached to the other part of the word. Mm. So, for instance, when I say Gunya Dahaga, I mean the people of the land of Flint. If my wife is Oneida, that word is really Onyota Aga, and it means the people of the land where the stones stand up. Um, the uh, 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 Onondaga means the people of the hills. Um, Onondawaga are the Senecas, which are the people of the big hills, or the uh, Doa. Mm -hmm. Oa usually means big, so big hills or mountains. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the Aga is the word is the part of the word that that we describe the people, where mm -hmm. the other part of the word is the place. Okay, right. so it's the people of a place. So the Nyonge, so even though uh, we we the K's are like G's, so it's Gun Yonge, Gun Yonge, Gun Yonge, Gun Yonge, So it's, uh, um, if, it's, if we're just saying the place, it'd be Gun So mm. it'd be like a long A at the end. But when we put it to the Aga, it, it, then we kind of soften that last one. So it's E. So it's Gun Yonge, Gun Yonge, Aga, Gun Yonge. Okay. I have to phonetically, phonetically do this, but let's let's do this. Let's leave this for now, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna revisit it another time. We're, if we if I, like in a week or two weeks, whenever I, whenever we talk again. And I, but okay. let me ask, let me ask you: Is there a publication? Is there a book, uh, something like that, that has this kind of stuff written out, or, or would you have to talk to somebody from the uh, from the nation? You know, there, there's stuff online that you can go to. I mean, honestly, mm -hmm. there's actually a Mohawk Rosetta Stone. They don't have it listed with the Rosetta Stone uh, site, but you'd have to find it. Um, nation offices and stuff like that will have it. But there, I mean, there are um, workbooks that have been designed sometimes for children or as, as primers for, uh, uh. for language to, for introducing, you know, how to count to ten, you know, what the colors are, you mm. know, table talk, you know, salt, mm. pepper, you know, sugar, mm. <laughs> milk, whatever, uh, table chair, clothing. I mean, so we, mm. we have some of those things do are written down. I don't know if there's a, um, a published. Um, language book. There, there probably is. I'll see if I can find something. Maybe I'll yeah. if, I, if I can find anything that's published. Uh, I'll let you know so you can find it. Uh, uh more okay. Easily or on Amazon or something. Okay, great. Well, let's uh, well let's let's get down to to, to the meeting around. One of the reasons I wanted to talk to you is because of the um, not, not the Redskins thing. Not the not, not I'm not really into the Washington thing. Whatever. It's really this whole case of. Um, you know how they, they let's put the the, the trail of tears. Uh, I know there's many a trail of tears. You can get into that, but you know the, the trail of tears that people talk about. Uh, they kicked them out to Oklahoma, and of course, as soon as they got to Oklahoma, people discovered oil, and they said, "Oh, you got to leave that place." It's like when what they do with with, with the with the Lakota, with, with Lakota. You know, they kick mm -hmm. them out to some 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 God forsaken land. All of a sudden, they say, "Oh, uranium here." Oh no, y'all got to leave. So, so <laughs> this is like an yeah, ongoing yeah. pattern. Uh, so tell me about this whole Oklahoma thing. And, and it seems like there's going to be some weird ramifications. Let me put it that way. Well, yeah, yeah, there's a lot being made of the um, of, of the court ruling. And mm. to be clear, the court didn't give half of the state to uh, to the creek. That's not what they did. <laughs> what they said was there has never been a change, a legal change in the designation of that part of you know the eastern half of uh, of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So as far as the federal government goes, and as far as the Interior Department, as far as anything on the books, there's nothing that's ever changed the land status of that land from being a quote unquote Indian reservation. Even though white people live there and they may have uh, bought prop or you know paid for you know, property title of some sort. Mm. That doesn't mean that, that the United States ever acquired legal, the states, I mean, the United States, the, the federal government, ever reclassified that land as being, transferring from being an Indian reservation to something that they would issue restricted fee, uh, or, you know, or, or fee title needs to. So, and that's not an unusual thing. The only thing that's unusual here is that the, that it went all the way to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court ruled that way. Mm. In New York State here, in central New York, when the Cayugas were trying to uh, you know, reassert their 
uh, place in Central New York, the Interior Department said the exact same thing. No, this this area of land around you know Seneca and Cuba Lake that um, that has never changed in its legal designation from being the Cuyuga Reservation to being you know uh, incorporated by the county or anybody else. So that's kind of what's happened here. And and part of the, the ruling in Oklahoma had more to do with a jurisdictional case on who could try, I think it was a rape case, on who could be, where, what courts that, uh, could this person be tried in? Uh, uh, what, did the states, uh, did the, uh, the state of Oklahoma have jurisdiction? Is it, um, is the, is the jurisdiction with, with the federal government or even tribal courts? So this ends up being, the, the debate starts there and it ends up with the court having to make a legal determination about whether this land is actually creek land or not. Uh. Or creek. Well, well, one of the reasons, one of the things that I first thought of is this whole thing, like, you know, oh, the, say, say the nations that are up um, near the Canadian border. There's cases, you know, where you're on one, uh, you know, somebody might be hunting you. So, oh, OK, you you might be on uh, the American side and then, and then you can oh, you just walk over to across the uh, you're just a, a few feet in, in the same building and you're on the Canadian side and they can't mess with you. So is the, how does that scenario play out with this thing? In other words, is this is this mean that that parts of Oklahoma is a sovereign uh, area? Now, as far as the federal government is concerned, mm -hmm. this designation has more to do with the distinction between state uh, jurisdiction and state land and yeah. federal jurisdiction than this idea. Because to be clear, back during the Bush administration, when this idea of the uh, UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples was being uh, batted around, so mm. there was there was work to put this international document together. The, 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 four countries voted uh, or uh, voted against this uh, at the UN: the United States, Canada, uh, New Zealand, um, and uh, Australia. They voted against the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. So the question was, why did the United States vote against it, or why did any of them? But but the United States voted against it. Because they were concerned about what the ramifications of international law right. would uh, would play in the state, and the U.S. At, in 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 this time period claims to be in uh, operating in a policy of recognizing self determination for Native people. They, <laughs> there's five policies, five policies that the federal government has had, and many of them overlap. Dramatically, but it was it was extermination, removal, assimilation, termination, and self determination. Now, uh -huh. don't make no mistake about it. All five of these policies are still um, constitute genocide, and and the reason the self determination does uh, still is because the National Security Council wrote a, a letter or, or, or produced a document for the Bush administration and. To be released um, to publicly set the record for, uh, straight on what the U.S. policy was on Native people, and they said, "Look, when the United States says self determination or um, uh, or self regulation or, or whatever else, what they mean is internal self determination." They said, uh, "We don't mean the we don't mean the international definition. Mm. We're not talking about sovereignty here. We mean that they can set up their own charter." They, uh, but it's still going to be under the United States, and they and they and they went real clear on this one. They said the United States does not recognize Native people as having the the authority to assert sovereignty over their land. Wow! I mean, that's the National Security Council saying this. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to be clear, and and that was that would lay at the foundation of why they were against. Many of the articles and enough of the articles to vote against it. The UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. So. Even, and, and the interesting thing here, though, in this in Oklahoma case, is what they're saying is there's no legal um, transfer of land title from being Muscogee Creek lands or, or, or any of the other territories that were affected by this ruling specifically. There was no legal transfer to the state of Oklahoma or, for that matter, to the United States. I mean, but... Right now, they're only dealing with, with state versus federal or mm. state versus tribe. So, but the crazy part is the same thing can be said about jurisdiction, about citizenship. There's no legal um, 
moment. There was no moment. There was no treaty. There was no surrender. There was no annexation. There was no, um, you know, uh, you know, suit, you know, pers- or, you know, or pursuit of uh, of incorporation. There was nothing to establish any kind of legal subjugation of Native people, not just our land, of Native people to the United States. So even in 1924, when they passed the U.S. Citizenship Act. Mm. They just declared that Native people were citizens. And they said nothing mm-hmm. in this act shall be interpreted as to um, uh, put at risk any, any personal property well, or, or, or tribal property. Well, but, so, but, 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 again, but, but my point is, for the United States, in the, in the Congress and the Senate, to, to, to make a ruling like that, to do a pass a law called the Indian Citizenship Act and make a declaration that we are hereby citizens of the United States, that doesn't make it legal. Because we, if we didn't ask for that, if we haven't pursued that, if, if we didn't consent to that, then that's just one side of a, of a table making a statement that, uh, that the other side has, has no say in. And at, in 1924, it had already been established in, uh, in international um, conferences, um, coming out of World War One, that the idea of denationalizing, stripping away somebody's national character and imposing a national character upon them was a war crime. Really? Now, they didn't write this up for us. They wrote this up because of what was happening in Europe. Right. So the idea of stripping away somebody's national character was already, and this was like 1913 they established it. So, you know, less, you know, a little over 10 years later, the United States does exactly what the international community is saying is, is a war crime. Now, they hadn't even w- invented the word genocide yet. At that point, they were still using words like denationalization in, in place of what would later be called genocide. But genocide isn't just killing people. I mean, it involves a whole host of things like taking children and, you know, and, and indoctrinating, uh, sterilization. All of this stuff happened to us. Mm-hmm. But, the, but, but at its core, what genocide says is anything you do that creates a condition that would end uh, uh, um, the distinction for people, that would, that would make a people cease to exist as the people they were formerly. Anything that you do that does that, so whether, you know, however you want to play with words like ethnic cleansing and stuff like that, but whatever you do that creates a condition that will cause the people to cease to exist is genocide. Mm. So it's not just murder. It's not just, you know, uh, these heinous acts like that. But they're saying... Any and all of these conditions that could be created. I mean, I, I went to the UN t- because uh, we're still having, we, we still have this issue where we can't travel unless we get a U.S. passport. Mm. Well, in order to get a U.S. passport, I got to say that I'm a U.S. citizen. I don't consider myself a U.S. citizen. Uh-huh. I, mean, I don't vote in elections. I don't, you know, I, I, I don't pay taxes. I don't um, participate in the census. I don't do any of that stuff. Why? Because I am Dunya Gahag, I am Mohawk, I'm Ongu Ngwe, I'm not a U.S. citizen. It doesn't matter that they, that I can be. I mean, the fact that they passed a law that says I, that, that they declared I'm one, yeah, they've got to acknowledge that I have the right to be a citizen, but I also still have the right not to be. Right. I still have the right to maintain my cultural character, my national character. So the idea that, uh, that I can't have the Mohawk Nation or... Um, the the Haudenosaunee, the Confederacy, or 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 some other entity create uh, create a foundation of travel documents that does not require that I become a U.S. citizen. I mean, frankly, even a U.S. passport, I wouldn't have a problem carrying a U.S. passport if I didn't have to declare I was a U.S. citizen to do it. I don't mind using their infrastructure. I don't mind using a driver's license. But don't don't tell me that a driver's license means that I'm a I'm a New Yorker, <laughs> or, that, or that I'm a uh, that I'm a U.S. citizen because I'm not. It is it's it's just a, a piece of paper that has me conforming to the to the to the rules of the highway, you know, and that's it. Well, if you if you put it that way, then couldn't you? Uh, couldn't the nation? Uh, oh gosh, couldn't the nation still? It's almost like the nation could be. An, I don't want to. I, I know it's going to be. You going? Well, couldn't the nation be an? In effect, another state within this nation, within the within the United States, um, uh, it, it, you know. So, you know what? You have the states' rights thing. I, I want to say like, well, that's that's why I don't want to say it that way. But but you know, it, 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 the 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 nations aren't they sort of like? 
I don't know, not ancillary states, but aren't they sort of full fledged states within the not within that that can have that that can enjoy the rights of the United States, but at the same time they're their own you know their own way of working. You, you, you get what I'm yeah, saying? that doesn't, but that doesn't exist. Uh, that structure doesn't exist. I mean, it's either either you're a part of the United States or you're not a part of the United States. Is the way you know. Uh, international stuff works. That's why the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples never addresses things like statehood. It never addresses, the only time the word sovereignty is men mentioned in the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples is when it talks about that this document is not intended to to um, abridge or, you know, uh, confront or um, interfere with the sovereignty of the nation states. Not meaning us, meaning the United States, right. meaning Canada, meaning Australia. That's what it means. The only time sovereignty is mentioned is not referring to us. See, but what you just said is interesting because before, years ago, you could get a, uh, a U.S. passport and not be a U.S. citizen. Right That's, now, the only people, the only people who can you get a U.S. passport and not be a U.S. citizen are Samoan. But that's because what the, the, I guess. That's what I'm getting at. Well, I'm, I'm well, sorry. Let me, let me finish. Let, 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 let me finish. Yeah. The, the Isles of Samoa are considered U.S. territories, but the people who live there are not U.S. citizens. What they, you know what they are? They're called U.S. nationals. Right. So it means that the territories are part of the United States, but they are not U.S. citizens. So so they can get, they're the, but years ago, you could get, we could get a, a passport that had us listed as U.S. national. That's still a little problematic. I don't, but, but here's the thing. I think if we had a formal relationship between the nations, so that when we did get a U.S. passport, we were, used, we were just utilizing their infrastructure, their, their, their identification infrastructure, you know, whether it's an electronic passport or not. And but but it should be since the real purpose here is to make sure that we're not misrepre misrepresenting who we are. But if we're Lakota, if we're Gunyagahaga, if we're Onyotahaga, if we're, if we're, if, if we're Choctaw, whatever we are, if it's within the continental United States, even if we are a distinct um, peoples within that, I just don't, there's no reason that we, we couldn't get to the place to negotiate that. So, yes, yeah, I'm traveling on the U.S. passport, but I am not a U.S. citizen. I am, uh, I'm, I'm going to go home. Well, I, what, what the hell is so hard about that? Well, that but, but that's my point. There's, there's got to be a way to do this. But the problem is, if you come up with the way to do this, you still got to go to some other authority to approve your way of coming up to do it, which doesn't make any sense to me, right? But uh, the, the second part of this, this question really is, wouldn't this also be a case of be careful what you wish for? Because whoever sets this thing out, they'll they'll lay traps in their back doors, whatever you want to call it, viruses, whatever you want to uh, say that 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 eventually will, will poison your the, the decision that that you've made if you don't actually make that decision yourself. You, you, you see what I'm getting at? Oh no, yeah, I, I absolutely get that. I mean, for instance, you know, during this, you know, since. 9-11, then they developed this Department of Homeland Security. They also created this thing called the Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative. Whoa. Which was the most oh, stop, stop. Hold on a second. I ain't never heard of that. I mean, I'm not really a news junkie, but I ain't never heard of that. What's this called again? The Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative. I call it Whitey for short, but that's <laughs> <laughs> but it's literally called the Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative. And it involved things like um, uh, travel documents. Mm -hmm. And what they tried to do was, th this is where the enhanced driver's license comes in. It's about making um, um, the documents that we all carry, even if not a passport, that they would be qual that, that they would qualify as sufficient documentation uh, under the Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative. And so here's the crazy part. They offered to, um, uh, to work with quote unquote tribes to set up a new tribal ID system called the enhanced tribal cards, ETCs. But here's the thing <laughs> to get an enhanced tribal card. Here's the five criteria for an enhanced tribal card. First off, what nation are you a citizen of? The U S or Canada? And this was specifically your tribe. Oh, hold on, wait, wait, stop. Hold, hold, hold your thoughts. That's, I'm saying let's stop right there. They're, then they're saying basically uh, only Canada and the United States can be recognized or, or, or can be recognized as true nations, even though you are a true nation. You, you understand what I'm saying? Well, well exactly. And, and, well, and, and well, Mexico might be involved here, too, because here's the thing. They recognize that there are 
tribal organization that might have people who live on either side of or uh, any of the three bo- uh, sides of the border. So what they're, what they're saying is if, if your quote unquote tribe issues an ID for you, mm-hmm. the first thing they want to know is what nation are you a citizen of? And they are talking about, I hate to use the word tribe because it, 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 yeah. it's for Jordan it, too. But say nation is fine. But, but they, mean, they mean U.S., Canada, or Mexico. That's and I, and I, and so that's the first thing. They want to know, you have to produce a birth certificate in the from the nation of origin, and they are not talking. And we do issue some birth certificates on our territory, but mm-hmm. they're not talking about that. They want a birth certificate from the one of those three countries uh, as a nation. And I'll tell you why: because on the card, even though it's an enhanced tribal card, on the card. Up in the one corner, it's going to have a flag on it. It's going to have a Canadian flag, a U.S. flag, or a Mexican flag. Mm-hmm. So that's the first thing they want to know. Then, of course, they also want the photo to be taken in such a way and under the right uh, standards. So that image, the data points on that image can be entered into their U.S. database for facial recognition. Mm-hmm. So that's number two. Number three, they want to make sure that there's an expiration date because we know your face might change over time. So we want to make sure that you come in and get a new photo taken every, you know, at least every 10 years. So number four is they want to have a a scannable uh, code on the back of the card so they can scan the card. Not so we can, Mm. but so they can scan and they can create a database based on the information they pull when they they scan the bar. They also, and here's the, the, the fifth one. They want an RFID chip in the in the card. Now I know people saying, "Yeah, they have them already have them on, on uh, credit cards." But here, you know why they have it? The RFID chip on, on these enhanced tribal cards. They're saying if we have the RFID chip, you don't even need to stop when you go past the border. You can just hold up the card because it, it'll read it from a distance. Mm-hmm. So in other words, anytime you go by one of their sensors. They can literally track you by the RFID chip on this uh, on this enhanced. So none of those features are features for us. So That's these it. are essentially federal IDs that we get to put our logo on or some yeah. or some bullshit like yeah, that. Exactly. So that all that was all done through you know, and, and I I call it being whitey compliant. <laughs> <laughs> you may actually call it witty. <laughs> Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative. They, they, their, their acronym, they say witty. I say, why call it witty? No, what it really is. It's whitey. It's whitey compliance that they're going for. No, this is interesting because um, I, I never knew who my, my father was like a one night stand with my mother. So I don't know my, my father's side, but there is a suspicion or there is a. I won't say evidence, but there's a, a lore that says that perhaps he was a, a, a Griffin or a Garifuna from 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 the whole, uh, they say Belize, uh, uh, Honduras, uh, down right down the coast of Venezuela. Uh, sure. he, he probably came from Panama. But the point is, um, they have the, the at least in Belize, they have their own flag. You know, they actually mm-hmm. have. A, in fact, I used to travel with that flag on my backpack back in the day. You know, you know, you know, you don't want to marry people. Were, people didn't want to travel with American flag. They would like paste a, like a Canadian flag on their thing. You know, so I couldn't do that. Mm-hmm. So I would, I would use that flag. So they would be the same. They would, in other words, there's a lot of autochthonous peoples. Uh, that have their own flags, their own whatever within some countries. It's just that they just have the flag. They don't have any other official documents or anything like that. No? But there, there's really no reason that any recognizable group of people, um, and I don't mean, I mean recognizable, not necessarily recognizable, but recognizable people can't either have their own travel documents or be... Um, Assessed as a distinct people, if even if they're going to use another nation's travel documents, like the United States or Canada mm-hmm. or whatever. I mean, like I said, I wouldn't be opposed to using a U.S. Uh, U.S. passport if I didn't have to say I was a U.S. citizen to have one. Exactly. Mm-hmm. 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 I know okay. traveling with that document would be easier uh, going from nation to nation. I mean, if I pull out my whole Indonesian passport, I know some people are going to say. Um, what is this? I, yeah. I mean, we don't know what this is. So, so I get that, and 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 I understand. There's there's a certain amount of ignorance that exists, and, but then there's willful ignorance. So the, the ignorance that people refuse to learn. So, and I don't mind trying to overcome a little bit of um, a lack of knowledge. Uh, is a better way to describe ignorance. But um, but you know, this is this is what we're faced with. Mm, mm. 
Well, we we took a long long on this on this thing that I I, done, I don't even, I don't know is a gopher hole a mole hole gopher hole I don't know what kind of hole we just went down but <laughs> I, let me climb back up here. Um, the, let me just, let me just I don't want to hold you a very very long time even though you know I could talk to you for hours. Uh, let's go to the matters at hand. Um, you know, again, it's reported in, in the, you know, in, in the corporate mainstream, whatever, whatever, whoever's media, um, that uh, 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 you know, native peoples are suffering more under this COVID. Uh, natives and, and uh, other, you know, black people are suffering on this uh, COVID more than anybody else because of certain things. Now, how are you all holding up? What What is the word in in in, in your circles of, 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 of you know how you're dealing with this? Um, well. You know what's going to happen? What do you go? Hey, we're going to do this for months. You know, if you do if you do the numbers, um, considering the size of the population on the territory that I live on, mm -hmm. I live uh, on the territory of the Seneca Nation. They have two distinct territories where most of their population lives. But that population of, of uh, people who live on these territories is only about four thousand people. Mm -hmm. We had twelve deaths out of four thousand. Mm -hmm. Now, twelve doesn't sound like a big number, but if you do the math. You realize that that's, that's a pretty high percentage of an overall population to have died. Now, I don't mean just got infected. So to lose 12 people, in fact, in one family, it was a son had traveled from either Florida or the Carolinas or something came up here, got his mother sick, his aunt sick, and his grandmother sick. All three of them died. Mm -hmm. And he, and other people in the family got sick. But that's how... And the reason that Native people, just like with, with other people of color, it has to do with the fact that we don't have the luxury of just sitting home and do and, and staying That's isolated. Right. Yeah, yeah. We, we either live with um, more than a couple of people. We don't have big mansions where, there, where there's two people living in you know 5,000 square feet of space. So we don't have the kind of separation. I mean, if, if somebody gets sick in your house, it's pretty hard to isolate somebody in your house. We don't have we don't have five bathrooms in our house, you know. We, so, um, so there's that. Also, testing was almost impossible to come by. Uh, it was only fairly recently when they came up with these Abbott tests, the ones that the that they can give you that are only about fifty percent reliable when it comes to. That's the one they uh, the stick up your nose. Is that the one they stick up your nose? I can't. Yeah, but you don't stick it. You don't stick it up very far. It's, it's, like, it's like the forty five right. minute. Turnaround test. Uh, we got those rather recently, but but we we couldn't get, look for all the testing that New York State was doing. We didn't have a relationship with New York State where they would allow us to send to have our people tested um, as a distinct people. So so we had no idea what we had, and so it, it does become more difficult. The, the other thing that that's tough is we don't have a whole lot of infrastructure on our territories. We don't have grocery stores. We have a couple of convenience stores, gas stations, um, and some of those stayed open as essential services. But we've got to go shop where all the white people for <laughs> shop. Mm -hmm. So so we don't we can't stay to ourselves as much because there's there there's food deserts on our territory. And, and I don't mean just us here in what is would be what would be considered Western New York, but this goes for every place. I mean the reason Navajo have been hit so hard. And again, on a percentage basis, they didn't get hit any harder than the Senecas, but they have a population of 125,000 people there. So when they lose, you know, four or 500 people, you know, or have 8,000 infections, um, it's a, it's out of a much bigger pool of population. But, but the Navajo, same thing. You have multiple, sometimes you have multiple generations living in one house. In, in my household, I've got my, you know, oftentimes I've got a grandchild staying with me. I, I've got my, my wife and myself and my wife's father lives with me. So we, there's always, there's, at any given time, there's three generations in my household. Even though it's not a lot of people, you end up with an elderly person living in our house who's being taken care of because we don't ship our folks off to nursing homes. Uh, we, we usually take care of them. Um, so we, we end up with a vulnerable um, uh, person within, within every household that has either an underlying condition or is over the age of 60 or 70 years old. I mean, I myself, I'm, I'm 60 years old now. So, but you know, so my father-in-law who lives with us is 76 years old. I, I can't, I can, you know, almost everybody I know has a house, has somebody in the household that is over 70 years old. Mm. Well, the uh, 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 last question, I, I swear it's the last question. Uh, there's this, the, the whole thing really, let me put it this way. Uh, 
when this first thing first hit, the the authorities, the PRs that be, they they never talked about boosting immune systems or we're gonna we're gonna ship every everybody some I don't know a, a B twelve or whatever they're gonna do. They never talk about. They just talk about bailing out their peoples. But don't most autochthonous people I know in Africa, for instance, where I'm where I, well, I'm not there right now, but that's where I live. They, they, in Madagascar, for instance, they they came up with this COVID organics, which is a beverage. But they have they have a tradition of 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 let's say traditional medicine. Now, the, the American um, Indians, if you will, and the natives are known for, you know, they somehow they're known for traditional medicine. Do you have traditional medicines that are coming to the fore that are dealing with this with this virus, with this uh, condition here? Not really. And I'm going to tell you why. Because most of our health systems on our territories are not holistic. Most of them are not coming from a traditional place. I'm not saying that there aren't people in our territories who do know some of the medicines, but every one of our health systems or clinics are geared towards Indian health services, a federal, a federal program. So uh, we okay. end up being beholden to, to, to Western medicine. And the other thing to keep in mind is because of what has happened to, to us traditionally in terms of lifestyle, we have had our diet completely altered. I mean, so you know, when they started doing what was commodity foods as a way to pay us off for land that they either defrauded us from or, you know, or, or got seeded to them out, whichever way, we ended up with things like dairy products, you know, powdered milk and cheese and mm-hmm. lard and flour and all these things that have totally impacted. Look, we have a, among the highest incidence of, uh, of diabetes in, in, of any other group in, in the United States. And that is completely connected to, to yeah. diet. Yeah. We have, you know, a higher incidence of, of obesity. Now, I'm not saying there aren't people on our territory who are, who are absolutely health conscious that uh, that eat the right things and that kind of stuff. But you, you go back to, to the time of George Washington, the first thing that Washington ordered uh, General Sullivan to, to do was to destroy our food. Mm. Destroy our crops and make our and make our fields untillable is what he mm. is, is what the, the the Sullivan orders were. So this is what you know. So to, to overcome and to survive that uh, has has come at a cost. Mm. So I mean, when I think about the the amount of disease that our people have faced um, because of colonization, and and let's be clear, the the first disease our people encountered was not influenza, it wasn't smallpox, it wasn't the plague, it was syphilis and gonorrhea. Yeah, yeah. The first diseases that you know, wiped out major parts of our population were venereal diseases carried by the via the rape culture of Europe. And there's no and there's no question about that. But nobody ever talks about it. they they want to say that well native people had weakened immune systems. But to your point, no we didn't. We had we had solid immune systems. It, the, the, when we did get overcome by disease it was usually because we had already had our food supply uh, supply chain interrupted by uh, you know, by the by colonization, and so our weakened immune systems came because of white man. We didn't perish because we 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 had weakened immune systems. We're in much greater health and in much better shape than the Europeans who came here. You but see- uh, and even though they had some tolerance to the diseases that they were riddled with. We had tolerance too until uh, until our, our entire you know uh, you know food supply was disrupted. Well, look, I, I see. I knew I was going to lie. I knew I was going to lie. I said it was going to be the last thing, but I heard that I, somewhere I came across this thing. There's somebody was saying, or somehow some paper was saying that, oh, oh no, the the the, uh, the Europeans didn't, didn't bring over this gonorrhea or this syphilis. No, the natives had it already, and in fact, they gave it to European who brought it back. I mean, did you hear that? <laughs> I mean, have you heard that? Because I've heard that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've heard people say it, but but nobody's ever been able to uh, provide any proof. I mean, there's no question. When when um, James Cook, who was actually killed uh, uh, when he went to Hawaii, and he was uh, England's greatest uh, map maker, cartographer. He was he was England's greatest navigator. He he went to Australia and, and the South Pacific. He, you know, the Polynesian Islands. So James Cook was the preeminent sailor uh, of the of, of Europe, right? Mm. So when he goes to uh, when when he comes well. upon Hawaii for the first time, he writes in his journal his concern about the loss of life that will occur if he allows his men to uh, to go ashore. Yeah. Mm. I mean, he writes it down, and now he didn't just dream this thing up. He knew that they were carrying this disease. 
And so he wrote in his journal originally, before the first, he let his first man go, go ashore. He knew that, first off, he knew that they were going to, they were going to commit rape. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, and he knew that his men were carrying disease. So all of these, this a sense of nobility that came with these sailors, whether it's Columbus or, you know, John Cabot or, you know, uh, James Cook, any, any guys, they weren't, they, most of these guys were scumbags and their, and their crews were a bunch of dirtbags too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's 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 end there with the dirt bags. Uh, I think that's appropriate. You know. <laughs> Look. Thanks so much for talking to me. Uh, we have to do this again. I don't want to make it. I don't want to burn you. But maybe in a couple of weeks or something like that, we'll we'll well, talk. Anytime. Some, anytime. Where it's, uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, right. uh, and I'm, I'm glad you're uh, recording some of this stuff. I, these are conversations that. That are great to be shared. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let, uh, let, uh, in fact, uh, let, let me just take this 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 uh, opportunity to say this. Um, this goes up on my YouTube channel. I have different ways of doing it, but this goes to my YouTube channel. But my YouTube channel is not monetized, right? Plus, it's plus. Right, it's, it's, my- <laughs> plus, it's a uh, Creative Commons, right? Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because when I started this, when I started this, I always thought of YouTube as an archival service. It's as simple as that. So sure. I don't have to go through yep. all this stuff. But more importantly, I've been telling people, because, you know, I'm an archivist. I've been telling people, please talk to your elder people. This is like for, for the last 20 years. I've been, please talk. And of course, people, nobody's talking to them. They're not right talking to them. So then I just started talking to myself about my own experiences. And then I started to talk to other people. But I really wish because of technology, you know, people really need to talk to other people in their families. I just talked to a woman. I just talked to a woman. I'm going to post this up later uh, here in uh, here in Missouri. Right? She came up from Mississippi, but I, I went over there with, with my best friend here because she was you know, cooked him cook us some meal, right? And and so I started interviewing her, and she says stuff that he he's known her for years that he doesn't know. You you, you know what I mean? So I'm just trying to say people yeah, just don't know because they don't get to. To talk like this and family unions, forget that they don't. I don't know what they talk about in family unions, but you know it's weird to me that people don't want to talk. Well, to it, 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 it is amazing how little dialogue actually takes place, and when you pierce that veil, even people who've known each other for you know for their entire lives become amazed that they didn't know that. I, I didn't realize that's the way somebody viewed something, and and so I mean, and there's nothing wrong. It, there's nothing wrong with disagreeing either. Because if you don't understand the perspective of, of the people you like, you sure as hell aren't going to ever understand the perspective of the people that you don't like. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, well, let's end it there. I'll talk to you All soon, right. man. And you know, stay safe, as they say. And these everybody's saying the same thing these days: stay safe. You know, so All please right, stay you safe. Too. You know, and you, and you travel quite a bit, so I'm really concerned about you. You know what I'm saying? So no, I, I actually don't. I, the other day, I went to. A drive-by funeral service of a, of a friend of mine who died. He was 80 years old. Didn't die of COVID, but I, I went to his funeral. It was a drive-by thing. And it's the first time that I actually jumped on the New York State through it. And I only drove an hour from my house. I, I, I have been going from my home to my studio, and that's all I've done for Good. the last four, okay. four and a half months. So that's all I do. Okay, <laughs> man. I'll talk to you. All right. All right, later. Yeah, you, you be safe. Bye. Yeah.